Okay, the second talk is more simple, I guess. And this is about wrapping static cast and reinterpret cast into safer and stricter functions. So as you can see, C++ improved upon C's cast operator by adding new and stricter casts. And we're going to follow on its footsteps and make our own even more strict and even more safe casts. So in this short talk, we'll cover the implementation of the following type conversions, which are number to number, enum to enum, number to enum. Uh, we will have some function to move through a hierarchy of types, and also some function to convert a line storage to its inner type, and foo void star to number, which is used in some legacy APIs and cannot be done safely, safely without reinterpret cast. So let's begin with converting a number to another number. This seems a very simple operation, but we can have overflows, underflows, and invalid operation if we just use static cast. To truly benefit from a custom conversion function, we need a will overflow function, which is pretty hard to implement correctly, and it is out of the scope of this talk. But in short, what I'm doing here is just checking overflow, overflows and underflows before they happen by casting everything to the, the biggest type available. And I'm also using the CFM header here to assert the validity of floating point operations. So once we have this magic function, we can actually define our own new cast that I like to call to num. And here you can see the power of having a more meaningful and readable function. Here we immediately see that our intent is to convert a number to another number type. We can add some static asserts with very uh, informative error messages that tell us what's going wrong. And afterwards, we can assert that the conversion will not overflow. Something that, to keep in mind is that we have to check for overflow before it happens, otherwise it's undefined behavior and anything can happen there. After we've done all of our static and non-static checks, we can actually return our result value by calling static cast. And that's pretty much it. The idea is wrapping existing casts to make them safer and more strict. So in a common usage scenario, we can see that uh, for simple conversions, there is no difference between static cast and to num. But as soon as we get into the enum realm, you can see that it does not compile if we try to convert an enum to a number or vice versa. And this is actually good because we are restricting our cast to a smaller domain. Also, uh, it, it deals with implicit conversions. It will not compile unless you explicitly have a static cast from an implicit conversion, which I think is a good thing. And if the will overflow function is implemented correctly, the following conversions will all give you a runtime assertion. So you can catch uh, underflows and overflows while you debug your program. And these are other examples. It, for if we go out of the max or min limits, it will throw a runtime assertion. So you have to know that Boost provides a production-ready implementation. It's called numeric cast. And you can actually uh, choose what policy you want to handle underflow and, and uh, overflow. You can use exceptions, asserts, or just ignore it. So use that. And another effective way of detecting these kind of errors is using sanitization options in your compiler. Both GCC and Clang have sanitize undefined option, which will catch undefined behavior before it happens at runtime and give you a lot of useful information. So those are possible approaches to solve this problem. Let's move on to uh, enumeration casts. When we deal with enumerations, we want three different conversions. We want to convert from an, from an enum to a number, from a number to, a, to an enum, and from an enum to another enum. We can actually uh, define the from enum and to enum functions and use std enable if to uh, match these specific cases. So the most general idea is converting an enum to a type that is convertible to its own underlying type. So if we have a from enum function where we pass an enum as our parameter and we pass a tout numerical type as our template parameter, we can actually begin by checking if the input type is an enum then we take the underlying type of the enumeration using std underlying type t, and we can statically assert that the underlying type is convertible to the output type. Now, I, I couldn't think of any example where this is false, but it's still a good check to have there, so why not have it? Afterwards, we can call to num, and this way we can also catch, catch the overflows and underflows. The other common operation is converting an enum to its current underlying type. So we have a specialization of the previous function that automatically uses underlying type T as the output parameter. So you can just say from enum and the enum parameter and you get the correct representation, which is its underlying type. Now we need enable if here to define our two functions. One that we convert to enum from a number and one that we convert to enum from another enum. 
The first one we just call static cast and convert the number to the underlying type of the enum. So the process is getting the underlying type, converting our input number to the underlying type of the enum, and using static cast to get the enum back. The second function is to enum and will convert from an enum to another enum. And here what we do is check with enable if that both of the types are enums. And if they are, we can use the from enum that we previously defined that will convert the value to its current underlying type and use to enum with our output type, which we'll call in return, in return this function that converts the enum to its underlying type and then to the type we desire. So in this way, we achieved uh, a very, very uh, intuitive and safe way of converting enums from and to numbers and between themselves. As you can see some examples here, if you want to get the underlying type and underlying value of a normal enumeration, you would have to use this static cast, which is kind of ugly. And from enum actually does that for you. It calculates the current underlying type and just gives you the correct representation. Also, since we're using two num internally, we can catch possible mistakes. As you can see, this next zero here is a negative number. There's a mistake here in the slide, sorry. So if we try to um, convert a negative enum value to an unsigned value, it will actually fire because of the two will overflow function in the two enum, uh, in the two enum conversion. And afterwards, we have some other examples here. The, the idea is, as, pre as previously, that it is safer, stricter, and we make less mistakes. And it's also easier to read because you know what you're actually doing. Another thing I usually like to, to use in my project is std align storage. And we can actually check if the storage is big enough and properly aligned for, for, for a type we're trying to access. So if we have a storage cast function here that takes a storage by pointer, and we want to access it as if it was a T, we can actually statically assert that the storage is big enough to contain T and properly aligned for T before accessing it. Also, this is a good place to have an extra sanity check because we, we don't usually want to access an output pointer storage. To prevent repetition of the code, we can implement a copy CV qualifiers function that takes all the constants and vo volatile qualifiers from the storage and applies them to our return type so that we can avoid uh, re-implementing the function multiple times. So it's a pretty convenient way of making sure that when accessing uh, aligned storage, you are not accessing the wrong type. An example is here. We have an aligned storage with the size of int and the alignment of int. And we can actually call reinterpret cast of double, and it will not give you a compile time error. If we use the storage case cast function, it will detect at compile time that this storage is not big enough and not aligned properly for the double. So it's a good, uh, good idea to do so. And you can also use it with place menu. So uh, this is uh, the last slide, I think, because I don't have any more time. And another Two uh, other two functions that I really like are two-base and two-derived, and are used to move into a polymorphic or non-polymorphic class hierarchy. And our implementation strategy will allow us to check, in case of polymorphic hierarchies, if you're actually accessing the current type using dynamic, dynamic cast. And we can do that by tag dispatching the current type on its polymorphicness. So if it is polymorphic, we will call this assertion here that will make sure that we're accessing the current type of the, of the polymorphic object. Otherwise, if it's, if, it's not, if it's not polymorphic, such as in the case of CRTP patterns and stuff like that, we will simply assert nothing. And this implementation assert function will be called by our hierarchy cast function that will take a pointer, make sure that the base we're actually specifying is a base of the derived class we're trying to cast to, We'll have our usual sanity check here. And we can, we'll call a ser correct polymorphic with the tag dispatching mechanism using is polymorphic type trait from the standard library. Afterwards, we can study cast safely. We will call hierarchy cast in two uh, very convenient um, interface functions called to derived and to base, which will compute the correct return type using the copy CV qualifiers function, which just copies constant volatile and we'll call hierarchy cast and return the correctly casted type. An example here is of our non-polymorphic cast is when we have a CRTP base, and we can use a uh, two-derived cast to simply cast this to its derived type. So it's much more readable, much, and ex it expresses your intent very clearly that you're trying to go from a base to a derived class. 
And another example, instead of a polymorphic cast, is when we have a virtual destructure, which will be detected by the type rate. And if we try to um, instantiate a polymorphic class, which is uh, a rectangle, for example, that derives from shape, and we try to call to derived on, as if it was a circle, we will catch our runtime assertion thanks to the dynamic cast. So as you can see, it's a very useful pattern. If you don't want to use a sanitizer in your code and you just want uh, a very quick uh, debugging session to catch possible polymorphic mistakes. Again, note that Boost has a production-ready implementation called Polymorphic Cast. It does not use the type dispatching. It has actually two different functions, one for static and one for dynamic cast, but it's production-ready, so just use it. If I have just one more minute, uh, there are some legacy APIs that uh, force you to cast to void star, and you also have to cast numbers to void stars. One such as an example is OpenGL. So it's a good idea, again, to wrap this cast in more meaningful function that actually check if your type is big enough to contain the number you're trying to cast it to. And for example, here I define number to void pointer, which will copy the CV qualifiers to get the correct return type. It will assert that we are not casting a pointer but an actual number, and it will do the correct checks to make sure that we can cast that number inside of a void, of a void star. Again. The, the goal of this talk was telling you to don't be afraid to wrap existing functions in safer ones. Try to be as meaningful as possible in your code and try to express your intent as clearly as possible. Thank you. <laughs>